Hello YouTube and welcome to Heathen Hacks. Today's video, <coughs> well not the whole video, just a PCB, is sponsored by PCB Way. PCB Way is a Shenzhen based PCB manufacturer and assembler with more than 10 years in the field of PCB prototype and fabrication. With high delivery rate, low minimums, fast turnaround, stellar customer support, and on-time shipping. Check out their sponsorship program for engineering students on the description below or just type www.pcbway.com slash sponsor.html to get sponsored on your first project. Also, this will be a two-part video, so watch out for the part two next week. Let's go! Here's the first prototype on the breadboard. I haven't added the reset button and state change detection function here yet. The code and the way it works is pretty simple. Every time the read switch loses its connection with the magnet, the red LED lights up and the buzzer is activated to let me know or warn me that my dog's water bowl fountain needs to be refilled. And the green LED is on when the water level inside the bowl is still safe. More on the codes and whatnot on next week's video, so stay tuned. Okay, here it is, fresh from FedEx. The PCBs comes with a box and wrapped inside a vacuum sealed plastic and bubble wrap, so no contaminants or stuff would scratch and make the boards dirty. My package contains 6 identical boards. I did not pay for any of this. I only paid for the shipping. Okay, let's see if the Arduino Nano will fit. I received it last September 19. Wait, let me check again. Yep, there it is. Also, don't make the same mistake that I did. I added some more functions or features like a reset button and a piezo buzzer after receiving the PCB, and not before submitting the layout. I also forgot to route stuff on the two ground terminals. And this was the result. So, make sure that all of the routes and stuff on your layout is connected and double check everything before submitting your design. Mine was accepted because I accidentally clicked ignore on the ERC before creating the gerber file if I remember correctly. I managed to solder stuff on the PCB on day 1 like LEDs, resistors, buzzer, and female headers for the nano but it looked so ugly that I just had to throw it out. This is the second prototype with the reset button for the refill count data. I also edited the code by using state change detection to count how many refills has been made and utilized the RST pin and internal pull-up resistors on the MCU for an external reset button to reset the refill count once the doggy bowl is cleaned. Here are the things that we need. A breadboard, some male-to-male -male and female-to-male -male jumper cables, three types of resistors, 220, 10k, and 330 ohms green and red LEDs, an Arduino Nano, a passive piezo or piezo or whatever you want to call it buzzer, a side mounted horizontal float switch also known as a reed switch, A 16x2 LCD with an I2C backpack. And a push button for the reset. The way this works is when the float switch is high or floating, the green LED is activated and refill count is recorded. When the float switch is low or both of the magnets are connected and completing a circuit, the red LED and buzzer is activated. It's basically the same as prototype 1, just reversed. Check out the schematic on the description below.
After the success of the second prototype, now it's time to solder the components to our board. But first, I'm going to cut some of this styrofoam material and use it to lessen the scratches on the PCB when I use my alligator clips as helping hands later. We need to solder the Arduino Nano onto the PCB. As you can see here, I made another mistake of not making the thing around the via holes where the soldering lead would be attached uniform. Some parts are easier to solder to the board than others. Yeah, I'm new to this and not even sure what I'm doing. After soldering the MCU to the PCB, let's solder the resistors. We need to make sure that we are soldering the right resistors on the right terminals. We will need a 220 ohms resistor for the red, 330 ohms resistor for the green LED, and 10k ohms for the float switch. Oh, by the way, I'm using a multimeter to know the resistance because unfortunately, I don't know how to read them by just looking at the colors. Okay, this is the 10k. Three thirty and two twenty. Looking at the layout, the two twenty ohm resistor should be placed here. Three thirty ohm should be here, and the ten K one should be here. Now, we need to add some wires where the float switch would be connected via female headers. Okay, now that it's done, as I have said before, I forgot to connect some stuff to the ground terminals. So, that's what I'm going to do now. This is how I connected them. Yeah, it's ugly, but hey, it works.
Now we have to solder some solid wires where the LCD will be connected via the female headers of the jumper cables. I made this project as modular as I can, so that it will be easier to replace or reuse the components without resoldering or desoldering some of the parts. So that's done, looks good on the top view. We have to continue on connecting some of the terminals that I forgot to route to ground on my layout. We're done soldering the ground wire of the switch to ground one of the Arduino, we did that earlier. Now we have to connect the ground lead of the LCD to the ground two of the Arduino. We're going to make a little hoop so that the wires won't move around when soldering. Okay, next is making a sort of lead wire to connect the positive and negative leads to the additional components. This one is for the piezo buzzer. As you can see here, I have removed the connection of the ground lead of the LCD. Yeah, I messed that up. I soldered it to the wrong terminal. Next, we need to solder the LEDs, then solder a lead wire for the reset button.
Look at that. What an abomination. Okay, now we just need to add some sleeving to the positive and negative leads for the switch and cut some wires to make them a little bit more uniform in length. Add some zip tie. Alright, we're done. Just need to connect the LCD and switch and we're good to go. Now let's see if this thing would even function as I thought it would. Let's power it up. Check the connections. All right. As you can see here, the green LED is turning on and the refill count increases every time the second magnetic part of the switch is floating. That means that the water level inside the bowl is still full or at safe level. On the other hand, the red LED and buzzer gets activated every time the two magnets are connected and completing a circuit, which means that it needs a refill or the water level is low. Now let's check and see if the reset button actually resets the refill count data. So, uh, yeah, that's all for today, guys. Watch out for the part 2 next week where we're going to put this thing inside a junction box and install the switch on the water bowl fountain and talk about the code. Thanks for watching and see you again next week.